Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Napoleon Total, and we're back today with another enlisted video. Um, in the last episode, we did the premium squad for premium squads for Axis Moscow, their history and um, what each each division or squad went through. And today, we'll be doing the non-premiums. As a spoiler, um, most of these are going to be not um, directed towards the regiment or the division. And let's just get started. If you haven't watched the last video, I highly suggest that you watch the last video, the premium one. So, and without further ado, let's get started. The first unit we have up is the 255th Infantry Regiment of the 110 Infantry Division. The 110 Infantry Division was set up as part of 12th Draft in 1940 in Lundberg in Military District 10. From parts of the 12th Infantry Division, the 30th Infantry Division, and much more. In addition, the home, the home guard, de, uh, the home guard battalion 400 was de designated into the 110th Infantry Division. As part of Operation Barbarossa, the, the 110th was um, integrated into Army Group Center and took part in the invasion of the Soviet Union in June of 1941. In December, the 110th Infantry Division was retreating down the front line from Kalinin into the southern western direction. As part of the 9th Army, the division fought at the Battle of Rezhev in 1942, which is received heavy losses. Also as part of the 9th Army, the 110th was involved in multiple war crimes in the March of 1944. Most of um, the battles that we see for 110th was either between after this point or before this point, of which during the Moscow campaign, not much is known. But in March 1944, under the German occupation of Belarus, the able body population was basically enslaved and was unable to work, and those who were unable to work were deported. The remaining family members, who were no longer able to take care of themselves, women, old children, and um, uh, other um, essentially non-combatants, were taken into three specially built assembly areas in Ostrich. The camps were located in a swampy area in no man's land between German and Soviet front lines. These were tended to disrupt Soviet offensive, considering the fact that the Soviets will not fire on their own civilians, of which a total of 3,300, uh, 33,000 people, including um, 15,000 children and 13,000 women, were interned here without any buildings or facilities, and left without care for the first two or three weeks. The typhus patients were deliberately mixed in among the in inmates, and the entrances, entrances of the camp was mined. Uh, Infantry Division 10, uh, sorry, Infantry Division 110 was also involved in registering and transporting civilians to the division area. They also provided for marching columns for the deportees to smaller camps and took over the guarding. Escaped attempts were shot down, uh, literally, and people who could not endure endure the march were especially the children and the elderly, were shot. Around 8,000 people had died by the time the Red Army was the Red Army had liberated the camp and the march. In, the Ju in July of 1944, as part of the 4th Army, um, 10th, 110th Infantry Division was almost completely destroyed at the Battle of Minsk in Belarus, as part of the Soviet Summer off Offensive Operation Bagration. On June the 30, 1944, the 110th reached Brizena. The engineers of the division had to build a temporary bridge over the river under the uh, under pretty much the same conditions that Napoleon had to do um, in 18 well in 1812 um, 1812 1813 but they were attacked once again like um, at Brizena they were attacked by Soviet air, uh, attack aircraft and numerous artillery fire on the July the 1st of 1944 the heavily decimated division was able to withdraw from the forest of Shemel after heavy losses reaching the front lines, and finally on June the 7th, 1944, they were met by um, 16 around 16 kilometers southwest of Minsk. They were forced with uh, Soviet troops, which were far superior. And in terms of the hopeless situation, General uh, Lieutenant Kolowalski, who was commander of the 110th, ordered the surrender of the few survivors. Um, the, uh, von Kal Kolowalski, who was commander of the 110th, and the remaining combat groups were taken as prisoners of war by the Soviets. On August the 3rd, 1944, the 110th was completely disbanded due to the lack of personnel. In Lindbergh, there is still a memorial to this day of the members of the 110th who died in World War II. 
Next, we have the 8th Reconnaissance Battalion of the 8th Infantry Division. The 8th Infantry Division was formed on October the 1st of 1939 under the codename of Artillerie Führer 3 in Open and in Berlin, from the 7th Prussian Infantry Regiment of the 3rd Reichswehr Division. When these allocations were exposed, um, the staff was renamed the 8th Infantry Division on October the 15th, 1935. The division par participated in the invasion of Poland in 1939 as part of the 14th Army and, push and pushed for Silesia and Krakow, crossing the Saan and taking part in the attack of the Polish Army in Krakow between Limburg and Lobin between Bug and Saan. During the Western Campaign in 1940, the 8th Infantry Re Division under the 4th Army in Army Group Center, Army Group A, took part in the advance through Belgium and advance through the Somme, the Oster, and the Meuse. She crossed the Sauber and advanced toward the Allied troops who were trapped at Dunkirk. The division then advanced onto Paris via the Arsenal and Somme departments. On June of uh, the June of 14, 1940, she took part in the entry of Paris together with the 28th Infantry Division. The division then crossed the Loire at Tours and saw the end of the campaign at Rion. The division remained in France as an occupying force until 1941. The Soviet-German War, which is Operation Barbarossa, during the attack on the Soviet Union in 1941, the 8th Infantry Division fought under the command of the 9th Army as part of Army Group Center in the Bionsk Miasma regions. Advancing towards Moscow, in November of 1941, the division was transferred to France and regrouped into the 8th Light Infantry Division. The, the 8th Light Infantry Division was transferred to the Eastern Front in the area of Army Group North, which should participate in the Operation Bridging to liberate German troops trapped in the Demyansk pocket. In July of 1942, the division was deployed to Lubok and Demyansk Dem area, which was reorganized into, the, like, into a Jaeger division, renamed the 8th Jaeger Division. In 1942, the division participated in the retreat across the Lowell and the redepositions, and covered the retreat of German forces which were withdrawing from the pocket. Defensive battles followed in the Rizhov Division and the uh, Prenya area. In early 1944, the division was transferred to Novograd area. She, par she participated in the defensive battles of the Mejoat area and retreat across Soli Rion in the Panzer position east of Austria and in the defensive battles for Pesco. In May of 1944, the division was transferred to 8th Army of Army Group South Ukraine and Romania, which it was deployed on the eastern edge of the Carpathian Mountains. The division then retreated to the Borno area after serving, after heavy fighting near Borno. The, the, the division retreated towards Moldova to surrender to the United States Army, but this movement was unsuccessful, and, remainder, and the remainder of the division was taken prisoner by the Soviets near Bern in May of 1945. So needless to say, this unit uh, mostly served as a garrison unit for the most of its early half, and then after it was renamed a Jaeger division, it um, it was already too late in the war to see any um, successful actions, and um, most of it was just getting getting defending and getting destroyed and get defending and getting uh, sent back to retreat. Um, but yes, that's all it for the 8th Reconnaissance Battalion of the 8th Light Infantry Division, although in the game it sets the 8th Infantry Division. But that said, let's move on to the next one. We have the 5th Tank Division of the 46th Motorized Corps next. Obviously, we're just going to focus on the 5th Panzer Division, which of the 6th 46th Motorized Corps isn't really much known. The, 6th, the 5th Panzer Division was form, formed in Open and now Poland on uh, the 15th of November 1930. Eight. As part of the second wave of armored divisions in Germany, it was uh, following the creation of the original three tank divisions in 1935. The personnel of the division were mostly made of Silesians, Sudetens, and Germans, uh, with already Sudetenland, Czechoslovakia, already being annexed by uh, Germany shortly before. The division took part in the invasion of Poland in 1939, but played no major role in it, being part of the southern thrust of the German advance toward Lowell and taking part of the Battle of Lowell. The 5th Panzer Division played a much greater role in the German invasion of Belgium and France. It took part in the Battle of Belgium, which, are, which was basically advancing towards Lille and participated in the Battle of Dunkirk. 
after Dunkirk, it continued its advance south towards Brest on the 9th the 19th of June and continued towards the Spanish-French border. The division remained in France until January 1941, and then the 5th Panzer Division was sent to Romania and Bulgaria in early 1941 and took part in the German invasion of Yugoslavia and Greece. It advanced through the southern Yugoslavia into Greece and engaged in heavy fighting against the 2nd New Zealand Division. And at the end of the Greek campaign, the division was sent north to participate in the German invasion of the Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa, in which the 5th Panzer Division took part in the advance on Moscow. Coming within only 34 kilometers of the city, the division was then forced to retreat after the Soviet counteroffensive in December of 1941 and remained in the defensive position throughout the winter of 1941 to 1942. It did not take part in the German advance on the Caucasus and the Volga, nor Case Blue, but instead it remained on the Army Group Center and was engaged in defensive battles. The division did not actively participate in the German offensives during the Battle of Kursk, but was involved in defensive battles after the failure of the former. For the remainder of the war, the division would continue to retreat and fight in defensive battles on the Eastern Front in Poland, briefly at Cortland and in East Prussia. It was trapped in the Salman po Peninsula in April of 1945, and parts of the division was evacuated by the German Navy, which allowed it to actually surrender to the Western Allies at the end of the war. The remainder surrendered to the Soviet forces in, in April of 1945, although heavy fighting on the Western Front, oh, sorry, although high, all, uh, although, oh, sorry, throughout fighting on the Eastern Front, the division was seen as one of the best German units by their Soviet counterparts. Up until 1944, when Operation Bagration caused the destruction of the entire German Army Group, that being Army Group Center, Soviet High Command would actually advise not engaging this division, if possible. So, um, pretty good division, pretty scary division, but um, I would say this division is pretty good for the defense. And yeah, uh, that's it for the 5th Tank Division of the 46th Motorized Corps. By the way, I did some research on the 46th Motorized Corps, but I couldn't find anything. There is a 46th Corps, Army Corps to be exact, but there's not a 46th Motorized Corps. But that is it for the um, 5th, Pan 5th Panzer Division. After the 5th Panzer Division, we have the 80th Infantry Regiment of the 34th Infantry Division. The 34th Infantry Division was formed between 1945, oh sorry, 1935 and 1936 during the rapid expansion of the army following the withdrawal from the Versailles Treaty. The division was mostly made up of men from the area of the Rhineland and Hesse. It remained there until the start of the Western Campaign on the 10th of May 1940. The division moved for, through the Luxembourg city to the area between Longway and Dullingen, where they were supposed to protect the flank of the northern uh, from the Northern Maginot Line. During the second phase of the invasion, the, the division made its way to the Ars, where they forced the French across the river back to Rome and the Marne. The division finally made it to Lorry and finally ended up in Arur after the surrender of France. Following the, following the surrender, the division was moved to the demarcation line on security duties, and by July they were tasked with coastal, um, coastal defense duties. In May of 1941, the division was transported by rail to Poland to deliver to be to be delivered to Brest Litovsk in preparation for the Russian campaign. On the second of, on the 22nd of June 1941, Operation Bagration was launched, and the division already broke through the defensive line around the town of Brest Litovsk and pushed to Brzezina, and finally the and finally did the name the Dnieper. From this point, the, the division crossed the Dnieper by the beginning of September in Bryansk. The division was then engaged in continu continuous fighting in Russia for over the next three years. After heavy losses in the vicinity of the Chersky pocket during the battle around Ulan, the 34th had to be replenished in May 1944. In July 1944, in Italy, um, the division was then sent to Italy around Genoa. The division fought in the Second Battle of the Alps against the Free French forces and capitulated in April of 1945. Mof um, obviously, um, there is this massive gap of time between um, 1941 uh, and 1944, of which we don't really know much, besides the fact that it did participate in the Battle of Moscow. 
For those that are wondering what the heck was the sec second battle of the Alps, it was basically Charles de Gaulle just trying to go after Italy, which at this point um, still was under Benito, um, Benito Mussolini slash fascist control. Um, he would win, but uh, because of pressure, he would actually withdraw from the uh, pressure from the Allies. But um, that is it for the um, 80th Infantry Regiment of the 34th Infantry Division. After the 80th Infantry Regiment of the, the 31st, the 34th Infantry Division, we have the 36th Engineer Battalion of the 36th Infantry Division. The division, the 36th, was formed in October of 1936 from men from Kaiserstrom, and thus it mostly consisted, consisted, consisted of Bavarians and Palinites. During the German invasion of France, the 36th Infantry Division was part of Army Group A, um, 16th Army, where it, took, it served in 7th Corps. Crossing into France for the chairs, the division took part in Operation Barbarossa as part of 41st Army Panzer Group. Um, it, sorry, the, 40, the division participated in Operation Barbarossa as part of the 41st Panzer Group, Panzer Corps to be exact. It, it was attached to Army Group North. In late October, the division helped establish a bridge here near Kalinin, which did so under heavy Soviet fire. In December of 1941, the division was headed west to Kalinin, and it, and it came under fire from the Soviet 365th Rifle Division. The Soviet division was forced to retreat after German forces began flanking them from the east. During the winter, division, the division took heavy casualties. In summer of 1942, the division fought at Rezhev and Brajnavano taking heavy casualties once again. In July of 1943, during the Battle of Kursk, the division was part of 37th Panzer Corps, a reserve unit for the 9th Army just south of Orol. With the Soviet forces showing slowing down Walter Model's advance at Kursk, the division was part of active duty on 6th of July, and on the, 21st, uh, on the 12th, Field Marshal Kluger ordered the division to retreat from Orol to rejoin the 9th Army as the Soviets began to storm the city outskirts during during the Battle of Kursk. Changing his mind, he then sent it back north with the 12th Panzer Division, arriving in there fully four hours later to retake the city. In summer of 1944, the, the Red Army launched Operation Bagration. This division was only had only the size of two regiments, and the division was largely destroyed after Operation Bagration, like with all other German regiments, divisions, and army groups. <laughs> the division then returned to France and reformed the 36th Volksgrenadier Division. Then, then the unit was sent westwards in September of 1944 to counter the Allied advance into France and Luxembourg. Although it remained in reserve until the 10th of September, it was given to the 1st Army in Mosul. The division was part of the, uh, the January 1935 Operation Northwind, where it served as part of the 13th SS Infantry Corps. Now the, the division was reduced to only a single regiment, and on September uh, and on March the 28th, the division was part of the 7th Army's left wing of the 82nd Corps, which now was resisting General George S. Patton's 3rd Army in Central Germany. Nothing is much known after this point. So basically, this unit was mainly uh, essentially like a, a public order unit until after uh, Operation Barbarossa and which um, it did serve in Moscow, although not much is known. And after that point, um, it served in Kursk, which is, um, I guess, um, what it's more famous for. And after that point, it was just uh, transferred as a Volk Volksgrenadier unit. And after that point, um, yeah, they were fighting on the Western Front against the Americans. But that is it for the 36th Engineer Battalion of the 36th Infantry Division. After the 36th Engineer Battalion of the 36th Infantry Division, we have 2nd Group of JG-52, or also known as Yagawada-52. Uh, like with my premium video, I am not going to be saying that uh, um, German word because I'm definitely going to be butchering it. So for now on, JG-52 is going to be referred only to me as JG-52. Originally part of JG-4433, JG-52 was spent the summer of 1939 training and practicing bomber defense around Stuttgart and along the western German border. JG-52's final pre-war deployment was near Williamshaven to train in dogfighting. In mid-August 1939, it was moved to Brombin in time for the mobilization of the Wehrmacht. 
which it prepared to defend Stukarth and its factories from French bombers. When the war finally began, uh, JG-57 um, would not sorry JG-52 would not see much action with its notable exception of shooting down en enemy reconnaissance aircraft. It will be sent back to Berlin for training purposes. During Operation Barbarossa, the unit operated on the southern and central sectors of the front. During 1941-1942, the Luftwaffe was constantly on the offensive against the, mass, the vast swarms of the ill-equipped and poorly trained Soviet Air Force. The experienced and well-equipped JG-52 fighter pilots came, claimed numerous aircraft shot down. By early of 1942, JG-52 and JG-3 provided fighter support along with the entire southern sector of the Eastern Front. In mid-July of 1942, JG-52 commenced re-equipping re with the new BF-109Gs, and basically it provided uh, uh, air support over um, the, the German drive into the Caucasus. The first group of JG-57 by this time has become essentially a mobile fire brigade, moving to areas which were urgently needed for um, air support. In areas ranging from this, this would include areas ranging from the Black Sea to the Moscow Front. First group of JG-52 was in constant action, while second group of JG-52 supported the attempt of the Fourth Panzer Army to break, f uh, the break, to break through the siege of the Sixth Army at Stalingrad in late 1942. The first half of 1943, JG-52 saw much action uh, in the center towards the Strait of Pelin and Crimea. By mid-March, um, second and third groups had a task of protecting the 17th Army's main line of retreat. During the Battle of Kursk, first and third groups moved into Ukraine in July 1943 in preparation for the offensive. By that time, the German pilots faced the, the, the uh, the German pilots faced the new generation of advanced Soviet aircraft, such as the Yak-9s and the LA-5s. However, that did not stop JG-57 from achieving the 8,000 8, mark for aerial victories, and of which um, Group 1 of JG-52 um, achieved 6,000 of JG-52's overall count. By August of 1943, JG-52 was the sole complete fighter wing on the Eastern Front. In the 10th of May 1944, the 9,000th aerial victory was made, with the 10,000 be mark being passed on the 2nd of um, the 2nd of September 1944. So a lot of aerial victories for JG-52. JG-52 would then retreat to Romania, where it will duel, duel with the United States Air Force, the 15th um, Air Bombing Force, which was tasked with the bombing of the Romanian oil fields. During um, JG-52's six-week defense, some 15 American aircraft were shot down, but, but by this time, the second group of JG-52 was reduced to only nine operational fighters. By the spring of 1945, first and third groups were stationed within Czechoslovakia, and Czechoslovakia um, with second group based in Austria. Although the units surrendered to the Americans at the end of the war, most of uh, Group 1 and 3's personnel was handed over to the Soviets. So this unit did a lot of fighting on the Eastern Front and some fighting on the Western Front, although you could also call it the Balkan Front. Um, a lot of action and um, just getting 10,000 uh, victory marks for aerial victories is quite impressive, even for my sand, even for a lot of standards. So yes, that is the second group of JG-52. After JG-52, we have the 9th Infantry Regiment of the 23rd Infantry Division. The German 23rd Infantry Division, also known as Infantry Division um, 23, later the 26th Panzer Division, was organized along standard lines for German infantry. It was non-motorized and relied on horse-drawn wagons for mobility. The, the unit was nicknamed Grandier Kopf. The 23rd Infantry Division was a reserve of the 9th Army in the Northern Sector during the invasion of Poland. Together with the 3rd Panzer Division, it, it fought to occupy the Polish corridor between Pomerania and East Prussia. After that, the division marched through East Prussia to advance through Bialystok on the extreme um, eastern edge of the front. On October, in October, the, the division was transferred to the Western Front of Germany in the Bruten area. 
where it then crossed the German-Luxembourg border on the May of 10th, 1940. At the start of the Western Campaign, it was it arrived at Baston, near the Meuse near Chalaville. As early as September 1940, the division was moved to East Prussia and remained there until the start of the invasion of the Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa. In June of 1941, it was subordinate to the 4th uh, Army and Army Group Center, with which it made the advance to uh, Norwell. After that, the division took part in the Battle of Bialystok and Minsk and continued towards Brezhena. During the attack on Moscow, the division fought at Vyazhma and Malakovsky. On December 1st, 1941, the division was temporarily enclosed at uh, Frejewal and fought, and it had to fight itself free from encirclement. On the 10th, uh, a little bit later, um, from what date we don't know, uh, although it is highly assumed that it could be a few days later, the division fought in the Kalsen Kals salient and had to fend off an enemy incursion by the first shock army in that sector. After the enemy attack failed, the retreat dragged on until the end of February. In June of 1942, the division was moved to Charlieu in Belgium, where it was dissolved and all new units were formed into the 26th Panzer Division. In November 1942, the 26th Panzer Division was then once again transformed into the 23rd Infantry Division, which was transferred back to Army Group North to, on the Eastern Front in February 1943 uh, to secure Waslau until April. The division remained on the Northern Sector and fought in the uh, Changing Sectors Front, basically just fighting there for, uh, for no apparent reason. In January 1944, it, re it retreated to the Baltic States and remained active in the Baltic States until November of 1944. And then it moved to Orsol, and then it moved to Tron, and it then moved back into East Prussia. And um, yeah, it spent the last months of the war in East Prussia before capitulating on 19 on May 19 uh, on in May 8th of 1945 in the Vistula Lowlands. So um, pretty interesting unit. Obviously, it did see some action in Moscow, although not much is known. But um, yeah. Um, so that is pretty much it for the 9th Infantry Re Regiment of the 23rd Infantry Division, although you can also call this the 26th Panzer Division. After the 23rd Infantry Division, we have uh, Group 1 of Stug, Panz, Quip, Blood, Mother 2. Like with JGs, I'm gonna be calling this STG-2s. Nicknamed Immelman after the First World War I Flying Ace, um, STG-2 was formed in the 1st of May 1937, in 1939. Um, basically what a STG is, is basically a bomber wing. To be exact, is a bomber wing made up of JU-87s, which are dive bombers, uh, the Stukas basically. It fought in the German invasion of Poland in 1939. Um, it started the war with Esparta Luftwaffe 2 in May of, and June of 1940, and it supported Army Group um, a in the Battle of Belgium and the Battle of France. STG-2 remained in Luftfotilla 2 during the Battle of Britain before transferring to Southern Europe to participate in the Battle of the Mediterranean. In the South, it mainly served as a maritime distraction role as a, as a bombarded Malta from January to March of 1941. The wing then fought in the German invasion of Yugoslavia and the Battle of Crete. In the April of 1941, uh, in the maritime and air Designated, it did it did basically bombing roles and close air support roles. At Crete, it served with distinction against enemy ground troops. Elements of the wing fought in the North Africa campaign until 1942. That said, the bulk of STG-2 fought in the Eastern Front from the second 22nd of June to uh, of 1941, which is Operation Barbarossa. The invasion of the Soviet Union. Uh, when, when it began, it supported all fronts of all three army groups and served in all major battles, well, served in most major battles, such as the Siege of Leningrad, the Battle of Moscow, and the Battle of Stalingrad in, in, in 1941 and 1942. At Moscow, the first group of STG-2, which is the one that we have in-game, um, fought over the Vyazhma pocket until the 9th of October. Uh, it supported the 9th Army and the 3rd Panzer Army advance on Moscow. STG-2 then supported the rush to push to Kalin during the encirclement phase of the battle. Along with the events of Kalinin, 
and then Tola. From 21st of October, it fought at Trebolz against the Soviet forces trying to encircle the 1st Panzer Division when the temperatures soon dipped. By the first week of November, which the temperatures dropped to minus 20 degrees, Ju-87 engines started to fail, literally. According to the commanding officer for our engaging Soviet armor, um, which if any would take off, um, a regular bomb of JG SDG-2 would be equipped with 500 kilograms um, or 100, uh, 1,010, 1,100 pounds, uh, and and yeah, and an anti-tank warhead will be three 250 kilogram bombs. Primary targets at this time were army concentrations, roads, and traffics. On the 5th of December 1941, the Red Army launched their counteroffensive, which ended the, um, the German threat to Moscow and threatened to, to destroy Army Group Center. Some SDG2 groups were recorded um, flying at temperatures minus 50 degrees. It was then left the front with no virtually serviceable aircraft because of the cold and because of the Soviet counterattack. SDG2 was pulled back to Rezhev on the 16th of December, losing most of its planes. However, that said, SDG2 could still muster some 30 aircraft at the time. As the 4th Soviet Shock Army recaptured the supply lines, captured and recaptured, uh, the, um, the supply lines are tore up, it began a series of intense battles which lasted another 6 months for until which SDG2 was withdrawn in the May of 1942. Reported losses were 6 aircraft and 1 badly damaged, 8 men were reported missing, 2 were killed and 2 were wounded. The group was ordered to Maliksnov to refit and, re and rest. It returned to the front, supporting the 1942 offensive towards Vorzhnev before returning to Vyazhma on the, 4th, on the 14th of August 1942. Later, SDG-2 would support German forces at the Battle of Kursk, one of the last major German offensives on the Eastern Front in July. Um, 1943. The vulnerability of the ST uh, of the Stuger of the Stuka uh, JU87 and the loss of air support air superiority to the Red Army Air Force persuaded any further large-scale use of the aircraft in a traditional dive bombing role. In October of 1943, the, S the JU87 units were rena renamed uh, Stalwish Battle Wings with a mix of JU87 Focke Wolves. Uh, 190s, which operated in the anti-tank role. On the 18th of October 1943, most of the units were diverted from JG SDG-2 and continued without designation until the, the squadrons were renamed and re-equipped. I think I did say some. I think I did say I mixed SDG-2 for JG, but sorry, my bad. But SDG-2 did serve a lot of battles all across the front and did a lot of bombing runs, so uh, pretty interesting unit all overall. After SDG-2s, we literally have the 31st Anti-Tank Battalion of the 31st Infantry Division. The division was created on the 1st of October 1936, uh, recruited from Blanswagen region, which is in the central, uh, in north central Germany. The division was established with three infantry regiments of three battalions each. The division was first in action under General, oh dear God, um, Rudolf Kempere during the invasion of Poland in 1939 as part of the 10th Army or 16th Motorized Corps, which included a role in the division on the drive of Warsaw. After a reorganization, it didn't participate in the heavy fighting during the invasion of France and the Low Countries as part of 11th Corps and 6th Army Group, Army Group B. In June of 1941, it took part in the invasion of the Soviet Union under General General der Panzertruppe Hans Guderian of Panzer, of Panzer Group 2 of Army Group Center and the 31st initially fought in the battles of Bialystok and Moscow. Oh, sorry, Bialystok and Minsk. During the Battle for Shmansk, which commenced on the 17th of Ju Ju July of 1941, the division was part of uh, General Maximilian von Weich's Second Army as part of 12th Corps. It also was involved in the fighting of Bryansk and engaged in a failed attempt to encircle Tula, southeast of Moscow in the late 1941 during the Moscow Campaign. During the winter of 1941-1942, the 31st found itself fighting against um, Soviet forces as part of General 
Moldles, Moldles, Ninth Army in the Kursk area. Um, well, before that, um, it was actually part of Walt Walter Moldles' Ninth Army in the Kursk area in 1943, where it took part in rearguard skirmishes in the middle of the Dnieper area of Ukraine. It was almost completely annihilated to the east of Minsk in J June of 19 and July of 1944 which during this time the Soviet Operation Bagration was commencing, so I'm not surprised. Its command officers were essentially taken prisoner, as along with the most of the remaining troops. And that is it for the 31st Anti-Tank Battalion of the 31st Tank Division. Oh, sorry, the 31st Infantry Division. Um, yeah, nothing much is known about it, except for I did see some fighting in Warsaw, uh, Poland, and France. Um, did see some fighting in Moscow, um, uh, but um, it got destroyed pretty fairly on, but that said a lot of German units in Army Group Center got destroyed, so yeah, that's, that's that. After the 31st Anti-Tank Battalion of the 31st Anti-Tank Division, we have the 447th Infantry Regiment of the 137th Infantry Division. The 137th Infantry Division was set up as a division of the 11th Draft in October of 1940 at the Dostal Military Training Area. The divisions were formed from part of the 44th Infantry Division, the 262nd Infantry Division, and the 18th Infantry Division. The division took part in decisive battles on the Eastern Front in 1941, meaning it did not see much service, much or any service, in France or in Poland. It fought in the middle section near Bialystok, Minsk, Shomlensk, Vezhena, Vyazma, and the, finally on the attack of Moscow in Operation Typhoon in the winter of 1941-1942. Um, it did see much fighting during the Olestal area in the winter of 1942-1943. The division fought Shomlensk, retreating to Dezna, where it fended off Soviet advance on the Dnieper and the Primajet. She was subordinate to the, 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 100, the 137th, but subordinate to the 20th Corps of the 9th Army during this time. In 1943, the division losses on the Eastern Front were so high that it only consisted of two full regiments. Actually, it consisted less of that, but yeah. It was then fought withdrawn into, uh, from the front in November of 1943, and the remaining Troops were converted into the Division Group 137. The staff of the former division was assigned to the newly formed Infantry Division 171st. So essentially, um, 137th Infantry Division was essentially disbanded. And uh, the 137th Infantry uh, Division Group was subordinate to uh, um, Corps Division E in Army Group Cent Center which was established in November of 1943. Any information of uh, Infantry Group 137 was uh, continue, wasn't present until this point. So yeah. Also a fun note, um, the 447th Infantry Regiment um, at the time of Moscow, it was called the 447th Infantry Regiment. Uh, but after Moscow was renamed the 447th Grenadier Regiment, so that's that's that. After the 447th Infantry Regiment, we have the 303rd Infantry Regiment of the 162nd Infantry Division. The 162nd uh, was set up in December the 1st of 1939 as part of the 7th draft of the deployment of the deployment in Military District 2, Setin and the Bourne Military Area Training Area. The 162nd fought in Army Group Center during the Battle of Rajev. And yeah, due to heavy losses at Kaledin and Rajev, the 162nd was disbanded on December 23rd of 1941. On May of 18th, 1942, it was transferred to Setsen to refresh as a division, where it functioned as a training unit and renamed the 162nd Turkmen Division on May of 21st, 1943. Once again, obviously, at this point, you can see that um, there's not a lot of information about the division at Moscow or anything before the point of uh, Operation Barbarossa or during Barbarossa. 
Um, the 162nd Turk Turkestan Division was formed in May of 1943 and composed of three Azari and six Turkestan Artillery and Infantry units. These units were renamed, uh, retained many German enlisted personnel and contained Georgians, Armenians, and other Aus Legion. In German, Aus Legion is Foreign Legions, although they were co connectively referred as Turks. The, the, the soldiers were trained at Nuahama and the division was sent in October of 1943 to Northern Italy. The 167th became the largest division of all Aus Legion or Foreign Legions in Germany. Uh, under well in the area and in early 1944 the division was assigned to guard L Ligurian coast in Italy and in June of 1944 to combat in Italy however it was withdrawn from the front due to poor performance from the remain for the remainder of the war the division fought the Italian resistance movement near Sapal and Val de Torio in Italy in the initial after initial setbacks, the division proved to be quite effective against partisans. Essentially, <laughs> the main body of the division surrendered near Palau in May of 1945 to the Western Allies, and when it surrendered, it was dispatched to Toronto. In accordance with the agreement signed by the British and Americans at Yalta, the uh, the soldiers were repatriated, quote unquote, repatriated, to the Soviet Union, which um, the Soviets kindly will send them to 20 years sentence of collective labor. In the gulags, but that is it. Um, under 62nd Infantry Division, not much is once again not much is known about it during Operation Barbarossa, nor uh, Moscow. Under 62nd Turkmenistan Div Turkestan Division, quite an interesting division, uh, consisting considering the fact it was a foreign unit. And yeah, that that's it for the 162nd, the 162nd Infantry Division, or the 162nd Turk Turk Turkestan Division. But let's go on. Next, we have uh, JG51, to be exact, as the fourth group of JG51. And JG51 is obviously a support fighter role. So let's get started. Formed in August of 1939, JG51 was based in the early months of the war in the West, fighting the Battle of Britain and the Battle of France. In June of 1940 to mid uh, July of 1940, JG51 was the only fighter wing. Uh, engaged constantly with the RAF, the Royal Air Force, the British Air Force, of course. During the battle, JG-51 will lose 80, 68 pilots to Battle Britain, the highest casualty rate of the Luftwaffe since the war started. Um, until November of 1940, well, Major Mulders became the unit commander of JG-51. In July of 1940, the unit led the invasion um, he be so basically, he became commander in 1940 of July, and he was the one who led the, uh, the division into the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 22nd of 1941. During Operation Barbarossa, JG-51 was positioned in the center on essentially a 440, 400, 400, 4,000 a long front. <laughs> it was to support. Panzer Group 2, which formed the right flank of Army Group Center, advancing towards Moscow. After receiving more than a, a, a hundred victories in the sky, the first uh, ever aviator to do so, Mulders, the unit commander, was forced to stop flying for pop propaganda reasons and was made a fighter inspector. After Mulders' departure and death, the unit adopted his name in early 1942. The unit remained on the center's uh, on army in the army group center of uh, the eastern front throughout the rest of 1941 during the period of june um of 19 of june 20 22nd to december december the 5th 1941 the the, the the division destroyed 1881 soviet aircraft against 84 losses in aerial combat with the onset of sub-zero weather conditions the majority of jg-51s Available aircraft was grounded. Aircraft of 8th Squadron of JG-51, um, being armed mostly in early 1942, was sent back into defensive missions 
uh, to protect armed group centers left flank. Night bomber raised by Soviet bombers during the June of 1942 put a large part of JG-52's aircraft out of commission on the airfields of Orsol, Bryansk, and Dubno. In August of 1942, JG-51 suffered even heavier losses um, without, without essentially anything in combat, which they were bombed. 110 of BF-109s were destroyed or written off of all causes during the month, with 17 pilots killed, missing, or hospitalized. In November of 1942, the second group of JG-51 was transferred to the Mediterranean theater, fighting over Tunisia, Sicily, Italy, before leaving for Sardinia. In April of 1943, third group of JG-51 was transferred and subordinated to uh, Group 2. The unit handed over its remaining aircraft to JG-77 and left the continent on uh, 19, 19th of April 1943. The, the unit had lost 26 pilots killed, almost a 100% loss rate since their arrival. So a lot of losses in the Mediterranean feeder. The unit has lost the unit has lost 26 pilots, which is a big deal. In July, the unit flew from Tarpur against American forces in Sicily. In March of 1944, it was moved to Yugoslavia and the Balkans in order to cover the, uh, the Romanian oil fields. Later in 1943, Group 2 was part of German efforts to thwart the United States bomber offensive by the 15th Bomber uh, Air Force, which was to bomb, once again, the Romanian oil fields. It was stationed at various times in Hungary, Greece, Austria until late 1944. During the Battle of Kursk in uh, southern Russia, uh, Group 2, 3, and 4 of JG-51 was placed at Oral with Luftwaffe 6, flying in support of Army Group Center. On June the 5th, uh, sorry, on July the 5th, 1943, the Soviets launched um, Korean airstrikes against German airfields. Thus, Germany had to scramble all available aircraft, fighters, bombers, whatever, in the largest aerial battle in history, as one of the largest aerial battles in history, on the western, on the eastern front. My bad. <clears throat> While Jum Germany was, as Germany was losing the war, JG-51 retreated together with the rest of the Wehrmacht, and by May 1945, it operated for the last time out of East Prussia. Nothing much is known after the surrender, and. Obviously, nothing much is known during the events on Moscow, so that's unfortunate. But that is the fourth group of JG-51. Honestly, from all accounts, this group has is not one of the best, but it, it is definitely not one of the worst. After JG-51, we have the 445th Infantry Regiment of the 134th Infantry Division. The 134th was formed as division in the 11th draft on October 15, 1940, at the Grosnov uh, military training area from parts of the 252nd Infantry Division and the 255th Infantry Division, and parts of the 10th Infantry Division. The soldiers of the 134th were trained until March of 1941. From July, from June of 1941, the 134th took part in the division of the Soviet Union, therefore it didn't see much or any action in France, Poland. Um, the 130, like I said, the 131st Infantry Division took part in the invasion of the Soviet Union as army as part of Army Group Center. In December of 1941, while advancing on Moscow, the division was involved in the defensive battle of Klim. Together with the 45th Infantry Division, it was temporarily surrounded by the 2nd Army of the Soviet Union near Lin Linzny and lost a large por portion of its artillery. The large association remaining fought in the Orsil sector until um, 1943. The division was then took part in the defensive battles around Groma and Bryansk in the summer and autumn of 1943. In December of 1944, the division west of Ross uh, Rosonaya was attacked and surrounded during course during the course of the situation. The divisional commander of the 134th, uh, Konrad von Kaschenkos, was severely damaged both physically and mentally. He then committed suicide on the night of the of December 13th. Although some sources will say that he committed suicide on December the 14th. Between June of 20 uh, between June of 23rd and and 29th, 1944, 
The 134th Infantry Division and Armory Group Center was completely destroyed during the Soviet summer offensive in the Brojnesh pocket during Operation Bagration. Many of its officers and um, uh, would commit suicide. So, like with most German infantry divisions, it was set up and then nothing much, once again, nothing much is known about it during the Battle of Moscow. Um, that is partly because, um, like I've said, uh, well, I haven't said this. Um, I think that both the Soviets and the Germans were, weren't interesting, were, were not interested to talk about Moscow because Germany didn't want to talk about Moscow in their records or, or their war diaries because um, obviously they didn't see, they thought they were going to take Moscow, which they didn't. The Soviets didn't want to talk about Moscow because of what happened after at Rezhev. So let's go on to the next unit. Next, we have the 15th Pioneer Battalion of the 15th Infantry Division. The division was formed in October 2nd, 1943 in Wusenberg under the cover of the de designation of Artillery Führer 5 to conceal the expansion of the German army, which was essentially illegal under the Treaty of Versailles. With the announcement of the German rearmament, it was renamed the 15th Infantry Division on the 15th of October 1935, after being relocated to Frankfurt. The division was mobilized for World War II on the 25th of August 1939 with the 81st, 88th, 106th Infantry Regiments and the 51st Artillery Regiment and more, other more support troops. After being mobilized, the 15th was assigned to 12th Army Corps of the 1st Army Group of the sorry of the first of Army Group C, which covered the Franco-German border on the Shar, and it was transferred to the reserve of the 16th Army of Army Group A in December. In early 1940, the division moved towards the Tier before advancing into Luxembourg, when the Battle of France began on May 10th. In June, the division fought Arion and Nevers during the Case Red, part of the 6th Army Group of the Second Army. After France surrendered, 15th remain as part of the occupation force assigned to 27th Army Corps of the 12th Army. Transferred to the Eastern Front in July, the division joined 20th, 35th Army Corps under the direct control of Army Group Center to reduce the encirclement of Soviet troops around Minsk. Uh, sorry, it, um, it, it was part of the reduction of the Soviet Army around Minsk and participation in the siege of Moldavie. The 15th went on to fight at the Battle of Smolensk as part, uh, during August as part of 46th Army Corps of the 2nd Panzer Group. It became part of the 9th Army Corps of the 4th Army, facing the Soviet Yetna Offensive in September, and then it participated in the encirclement of Soviet forces in Vyazma and then Operation Typhoon, this time as part of 20th Army Corps of the Army. The division was then transferred to 7th Army Corps in November and December before returning to, you guessed it, 20th Corps in, December, in January of 1942 near Iduna. After fighting at the Groshnak sector in February as part of various different army corps of the 4th Panzer Army, the division was withdrawn to France to rebuild in May after temporary disbanding five, division, five battalions due to losses. In a propaganda move, the, the infantry regiments of the division were renamed Grenadier Regiments, along with all German infantry regiments, in the 15th of October 1942. In France, the, the division was assigned to 80th Army Corps of the 1st Army. After a year of out of combat, the 15th returned to the Eastern Front during the Third Battle of Kharkov, Kharkiv in March of 1943, joining, you guessed it, 57th Army Corps of the 4th Panzer Army of Army Group South. The division then fought at Donetsk, Izhom, and for the next several months, it retreated from the Soviet advance in the beginning of August, and then it fought at the Kryzhnev Bridge sector as, as a result of all this fighting. On the 2nd of October, the Grenadier regiments were reduced to two battalions. The division retreated in the face of the Soviet Konosh Popri Rog offensive in February, then faced the Soviet Ulan Bostanan offensive. The division then retreat to Romania and was destroyed in the 2nd Jansky Kreshe Offensive in August of 1944. The division was then reformed in the 4th of October 1944 at Kornapka from the remnants of the division, which fought as, uh, which fought as Panzer, 
Panzergruppe Winke, assigned to the 2nd Hungarian Corps of the 8th Army. The division fought in North Hungary for the rest of the war. It was an armor reserve until November after returning to oh dear God, another army corps in a month later. In December of um, in the December under the um, a whopping a grenadier regiment replaced the 81st regiment, which was attached to the Hungarian First Army. And in May March of 1945, it was then replaced by another division. Uh, sorry, another regiment in the hundred um, in in the 15th Infantry Division. So basically, during this time, uh, grenadier regiments were being replaced by grenadier regiments, which were then replaced, and yeah. It was then detached to the Hungarian First Army in March of 1945. Uh, it retrieved from the Tartar Mountains to Slovakia in January. The division then fought with the Corps, transferred the 1st Panzer Army to the Reform Armed Group Center in April near Zilnia, and then it retreated into Mo Morovia in May and then surrendered to Soviet troops abroad at the end of the war. So essentially this this unit was being attached to essentially many different units and then moved out like, holy cow, it was, it was uh, some sources said it, uh, it, it was... It was assigned to 27th, and then moved to 35th, and then moved to 9th, and then moved to 46th. Yeah, it was, it was, this move, this unit was just moving everywhere around the board. And so, yeah, that's basically it for the 15th Pioneer Battalion of the 15th Infantry Division. At this point, they should be n naming this the 15th Transferring Battalion of the 15th Infantry Division. After the 15th Infantry Division, we have the... 509th Re Infantry Regiment of the 292nd Infantry Division. The division was formed in February 1940 in Pomerania as part of the 8th draft of formation of the German Wehrmacht. For the Western Campaign, the division was transferred to Aachen and then across the Meuse. There were several moments of combat uh, um, of military operation on the orso assen Channel. After crossing the Marne, the 292nd engaged in solely in Troy, and then the division was part of Operation Barbarossa in 1941, which was put on the Polish-Soviet border. In June of 26, 1941, Infantry Regiment 508th of the 292nd reached the Biela Westia Wetza Forest, where the Red Army engaged the attackers in heavy forest combat for the next several days. Furthermore, Soldiers of the 292nd were involved in the Battle of the Yezhna Ben, July to September of 1941, the Rojna Kitty Boiler Strafs, and the Twin Battles of Vyazhma and Bryansk. During the advance on Moscow in January of 1942, the remnants of the 122nd Infantry Division, the 183rd Infantry Division, and the 255th were integrated into Kampfgruppen Schniga and fought into the position of the Istra River. During 1943, the 292nd was involved in Operation Buffalo Movement, Operation Zygmunt Baron, Officer Citadel of Army Group Center. The year of 1944, which was marked by defeat of all German troops on all German sectors, <laughs> um, between Pripyat, it, it, um, the division retreat from uh, retreated between battles between Pripyat and Bulg. In 1945, the division withdrew to East Prussia. In the Battle of Hillebegland, which and the division was crushed and dissolved in April of 1945. Hence, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the 509th Infantry Regiment of the 292nd Infantry Division. Nothing is much known about the 292nd, so yeah, that's that. After the 292nd, we have the 152nd Engineer Battalion of the 52nd Infantry Division. The 52nd Infantry Division was formed on August 26, 1939, in Steigen, in Military District 4. I uh, sorry, in Military District 9. In 1939, the uh, 52nd Infantry Division received border, border security tasks in Strasbourg and Tier areas of the West Wall, the Secret Line. It participated in the operation on the Western Front in May of 1940, which advanced through. Luxembourg, Belgium, Northern France, under the 12th Army. It then fought in the battles 
um, in France on the Ossa, Ch uh, Champagne, and Dijon. In June of 1941, the division was moved to Poland to participate in Operation Barbarossa, which advanced from Vilnius, Minsk, to Moscow, where it then stopped at the Poltava River. In October of 1943, the division was reduced to only a combat group after heavy losses on the Battle of Nivelle and was dissolved on the 1st of November 1943. The division was then recreated as the 50 52nd Infantry Training Division in December of 1943. The division was again renamed as the 52nd Security Division. The division was first stationed at Bolkovini and then in Fruisburg, uh, which is in modern day Lap Latvia. And then, at the Kirtland Pocket, it, was, it surrendered in May of 1945. So that is it for the um, 52nd Infantry Division, or I should be calling it the 52nd Inf Training Regiment. The, sorry, the 52nd Training Division, the 52nd Security Division. So yeah, that's that. Next we have the 33rd Panzer Regiment of the, 100, of the 11th Panzer Division. The 11th Panzer Division was formed on the 1st of August 1940 from the 11th uh, Schutzen Brigade of the Panzer and Panzer, Panzer Regiment 13 and Panzer Regiment 15 and uh, units moved from the 5th Panzer Division and elements of the 231st Infantry Division, the, the 311th and the 209th Infantry Divisions, most of which were members from Silesia. The 11th Panzer Division saw action for the first time in the invasion of Yugoslavia in April of 1941, passing through Bulgaria and, and arrived in Belgrade and assisted in the capture of the city. The division then was sent to the Eastern Front, which it took part in Army Group South, in which de it then participated in the Battle of Kiev, and later took part in the Battle of Moscow. At the Battle of Moscow, Soviet propaganda will make it a, a fiction claim that um, the 11th Panzer Division uh, which was fabricated, uh, made an encounter with the Pavlov 20, uh, 28th Guardsmen. Basically, the story was that Pavlov's 28th Guardsmen were able to take out the 11th Panzer Division. Well, the tanks of it. Um, the division was engaged in retreat in the defensive operations after the Soviet counteroffensive in December of 1941. The 11th Panzer Division uh, advanced um, during, after the Soviet counteroffensive was finally came to a halt due to the strong resistance from the 8th Guards Motor, Rif Motor Rifle Division and the 78th Rifle Division of the USSR. Harsh winter conditions were also a factor considering the fact that engines couldn't be really started. Um, the 11th Panzer Division was part of Case Blue, which is the um, our taking the Caucasus from J June of 1942 on were participating in the capture of Vorzhnev and the drive towards Stalingrad to avoid being entrapped with the 6th Army in the city of Stalingrad. Um, it did suffer heavy losses during the winter of 1943 to the 19 from the, the winter of 1942 to 1943. It engaged in a failed relief attempt on Stalingrad and then participated in the defense of Rostov which it did allow German troops to retreat from the Caucasus to escape. During operations on the Eastern Front uh, throughout the year, the 11th Panzer Division acted as a fire brigade, going where, wherever it, um, a breakthrough was made by Soviet forces. During the December, the 11th con Panzer conducted a series of counteroffenses against the Soviet forces uh, around the Shear River. On the 9th of December 1942, the 11th Panzer Division destroyed 53 tanks of the 1st Soviet Tank Corps in a counterattack to relieve the pressure of the 336th Infantry Division. On December the 19th of 1942, the 11th Panzer Division destroyed 42 Soviet tanks without taking any losses just, out, just south of Obolyaska. The same day, the division then engaged a second Soviet attack, destroying 65 more Soviet tanks without suffering any losses. By the end of the day, the 11th Panzer Division destroyed entire Soviet mechanized corps. On the 21st of December 1942, the 11th Panzer Division destroyed much of the Soviet 5th tank attack. Of sorry, much of the Soviet 5th tank army during a counterattack along the Shear. The division suffered heavy casualties in the process, though. In July of 1943, it participated in the Battle of Kursk and the defensive operations 
and retreat following the German failure. It was entrapped at the Kroskin Koski pocket in February 1944, and was almost destroyed in the breakout from the pocket. The division was withdrawn from the front and sent to Bordeaux, France, after receiving personnel um, from the 273rd Reserve Panzer Division. Being sta stationed in the Toulouse area, the division was moved to a sector in the Rome in July of 1944, where the Allies um, in June of 1944. When the Allies invaded southern France in August of 1944, it retreated the Rhone Corridor, reaching Muscon, later entering combat in Alsace. It helped in the defense of the Borkum Gap and, and, and was defeated in the Battle of Agincourt before moving back to, back to the shore. In December of 1944, the division fought as part of Armed Group G at the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge, which it participated in. At the, at the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge, the division had 3,000 500 personnel, including 800 infantry. Following, following, following the failure of um, Watch on the Rhine, the Battle of the Bulge, the 11th Panzer Division entered combat in Starland and Mosul, fighting at Rheinmagen with 4,000 soldiers, 25 tanks, and 11 guns that still remained, but were expelled from the region by the advancing American forces. It then was shifted to the 7th sector of the front, with its forces stationed in, and was then encircled at Ruhr. The 11th Panzer Division retreated southwest, eventually surrendering to the United States forces in the area around Passau on the 2nd of May 1945. Considering the fact that it was able to destroy 42 Soviet tanks and another 65 Soviet tanks without suffering any losses, this unit is quite scary. That said, it also did serve a lot of places, so yeah, this unit is quite interesting too. That is all it for part 1 for my enlisted uh, squad history, and uh, I hope to see you in part 2. It's been pretty long, and it's been a pretty long project, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.